Hey, Fat Mama Physics back with another tension problem video. This is going to be the last one. Again, with me going first and you get a problem to try. Let's get started. Ooh, this time we have a different setup here. We have the masses looped around a pulley, but instead of this other mass dangling on the other side, like the Atwoods machine, this one is instead supported by a table. So you have a different uh, setup here. A wooden block on a table, so I'm assuming this is a kilogram one, attached to a hanging mass over a frictionally, frictionless pulley as shown. The coefficient of static and kinetic friction between the table and the wood block is 0.4 and 0.36 respectively. Find the acceleration of the masses. Okay, so very similar setup. We have uh, two masses, but this time, if the blocks, if the masses are going to move, they would be moving down on the right side. So the eight kilogram mass is gonna move this way and the six kilogram mass is going to move down on this side of the table. So our line of acceleration is this curvature as you see here. Again, this problem giving us the both the static kinetic fr coefficients of friction seems a little bit suspicious, meaning that we might have to check whether or not whole system is going to move in which to overcome the static friction is to so high enough that will cause this whole system to not move is not out of the question it's still possible so let's test that out first by drawing a free body diagram for our both for both the masses here we don't know uh, which friction force is uh, holding the eight kilogram lock back, so just FF, there's tension, normal force as the same, FG is the same for the 8 kilogram mass. For the 6 kilogram mass, we just have the force due to gravity and the tension force holding it back. Okay, ignore this over here. What I'm going to do on this side of the page is I'm going to check whether or not the uh, this whole system is going to move at all. So let's check the uh, the threshold force, how much force we need to start this uh, system to get it to accelerate. So we have to use the coefficient of static friction in which FFS is equal to mu S times the Fn of our eight kilogram block to see whether or not, uh, to see what force we need to bypass. So that is 0.4 as our mu S times the normal force, in which the normal force is going to be equal and opposite to Fg in this case. So then I'm just going to use uh, Fg8 over here, and I can... I know that Fg8 is also Mg, so let's pl pl plug that in. I get 0 0.4 times Mg for mass 8, 8 kilograms. So I put the 8 kilograms in and G is just gravity 9.81. I expect you to know that by now without me writing it down. I put everything in 31.392. Okay, I'm keeping all the sig figs to check whether or not we have enough force to bypass this. And to do that, we need to look at the line of acceleration. So the forces along this line as the uh, whole system is moving down. So here we have a line of acceleration along this pulley, sorry, along this string. So Notice the two tension forces are going to cancel out. The force of friction is opposed by the force due to gravity acting on a six kilogram block. So if this force of gravity is larger than this force of static friction, then the whole system will move. Okay, so let's check force of the force of gravity acting on a six kilogram block. So that's mg mass times gravity, six times 9.81, we get 58.86. And that is definitely larger than the uh, static friction that we have to bypass, so our system will move. On the other hand, if it were less and the system doesn't move, you can just write the acceleration of masses as zero. That would be super easy, but that's not the case. So uh, we got our hopes too high there. So to calculate the acceleration of masses, we are going to consider both these masses as part of our system, just like all the other questions, force of tension, uh, tension force 
equal and opposite directions will cancel out. So align this, along this line of acceleration, we have F net equals the uh, mass of our whole system. So that's our eight kilogram block and our six kilogram block. Mass, uh, both those masses times the acceleration. F net, I'm, I'm calling the downwards force on the right here being positive. Okay, so this way being positive. Fg6 is positive. And tension forces cancel. We have the force of friction opposing that acceleration. And this is now uh, kinetic friction, not static anymore because it's moving. And this is equal to 6 plus uh, 8. This is 14 kilograms in total times our acceleration. Solving for acceleration, I'm going to divide the 14 on both sides. And we get the following. We do know that um, Fg is just Mg. We also, and for the force of kinetic friction, we know this is mu k times Fn. We know mu k. Fn is, uh, act, is the one that is acting on the 8 kilogram block, only 8 kilogram block, because that's where the friction is applied, is only this block over here. So be careful. It's uh, not both masses, just the 8 kilogram block. And notice this force of this normal force is balanced by the force due to gravity acting on the 8 kilogram block. And uh, we already wrote that over here in which Fn is equal to that. So we can just substitute the Fg8 in there as Fn. In fact, this Mg here actually. And I'm just going to put the, um, the M, this is the 8 kilogram block and not the 6, not both combined, just the 8. Just to make that look less confusing, this is mu k, the 8 kilogram block, times gravity. And so we can substitute all of that in this general equation here, in which fg6 is just the 6 kilogram block, times the gravity, and then the ffk, which is the for friction force, which is minus mu k times the 8 kilogram block times gravity, and all of that divided by the 14 kilograms mass total. Okay, so just uh, showing what I will put on my calculator. So the g's are just the 9.81's over there, putting everything in. We get 2.2, uh, 2.522. Rounding to two sig figs, we get 2.5 meters per seconds squared down on the right. So uh, just be careful when we're doing, when you're subtracting for the friction force, that's the uh, kinetic friction, not the static one, because the block, the blocks are moving already to help you find acceleration. The other thing you have to be careful of is when you're considering the normal force over here for the force of friction, that's only the 8 kilogram block before the force of friction applies because that's in direct contact with the table, not the 6 kilogram block that's rubbing against the table. So please be careful of using which mass in uh, which part of the equation. Now, next up, we have uh, B finding the tension in the rope. Again, uh, you can use either mass as your system. I'm going to do both very quickly for you to see. So here's our free body diagram just for the 8 kilogram mass. And the acceleration of this guy is going to be towards the right for the positive direction. So our F net is going to be Ft minus uh, force of friction, uh, force of kinetic friction equals the mass times acceleration. And then solving for the force of tension, we get the following. And then the force of uh, kinetic friction is equal to mu k times Fn. And says since the Fn is equal and opposite direction to the force of gravity acting on the 8 kilogram block, which is just mg, we can write down this as mu k mg instead. We can substitute that back over in the main equation. So we get mass times acceleration plus mu kmg. We can substitute in our mass. Acceleration we found in the previous question. Mu k is just 0.3 given in the problem. And gravity 9.81. Okay, and substituting all those numbers in and for calculating it, we get 43.724. Which we can around to 44 newtons. Okay, we're going to check the uh, using the 6 kilogram mass in which direction of acceleration is downwards. So our F net becomes Fg minus Ft, 
equals the mass times acceleration for the 6 kilogram mass. We're going to solve for Ft. Since Fg is just mg, we can substitute that in. And for the 6 kilogram mass and acceleration as uh, 2.522, we can substitute in our values, putting it in our calculator. We also get 43.724, which rounds to 44 newtons. Phew, that is a lot of work. Okay, so a lot of take in. Oof. But uh, guess what? Good news for you. The problem you're going to try is exactly the same thing, except it is on a frictionless table. Imagine you don't have to deal with friction. So uh, I think you can give this a try. You don't even have to test for whether or not the system will move. Good time to pause. And it's my turn to show you the solutions on Fastplay. Okay, starting with the free body diagram here. So we have the acceleration going down on the right. There's Fg on the 6 kilogram block, the force of tension pulling it back. On the 8 kilogram block, we have the uh, force due to gravity pulling it down, Ft towards the right, and normal force upwards. So if F force Ft cancels out because they oppose each other, F net equals to Ma, mass is the entire system, 8 plus a 6 kilogram block. So we're going to so solve for acceleration in which the Fg is just the Mg of the 6 kilogram mass, substituting everything in, we get a total value of... 4.2-ish meters per second squared down on the right, okay? Now we're going to find the tension force at, on inside the string. Here we're going to draw a new free body diagram. I will do the solutions for both masses, just for your sake. And for the right, uh, left side, we have the acceleration towards the right, the uh, tension force towards the left, no friction. And so the only force acting along the direction is the force of tension. Mass times acceleration gives us 30, ah, it should be 34 newtons, sorry about that. So using the mass on the right, the 6 kilogram mass, we have the downwards acceleration. So Fg will subtract Ft, Ft is opposing it. And solving for the, uh, solving for Ft, we uh, get the following, where Fg is just the mass of mass times gravity of the 6 kilogram block. We substitute everything in, we get a total of uh, 33.6, which is 34 newtons. Wow, it was a lot simpler than before, eh? So uh, here we are, here are the solutions. Sorry you made a mistake here. I counted around to uh, 30, 34 newtons, not 36 newtons over there. Interestingly, the tension force is a little bit less than the previous problem uh, since there is no friction force to oppose the system. The string is a little bit more slack. So thank you for bearing with me. Hopefully these videos were useful for you and that you can use some of the skills here to uh, tackle your own problems. I wish you the best of luck. I thank you for watching this video. Fat Mama Physics signing out.